What is up guys, Jimmy Mikkel here of Social Vineyards. Welcome back to another video. This is episode 12 of Julian's Wine School. In this series, we are going to be exploring over time all the wonders in the wonderful world of wine. So recently, I was given the opportunity to taste a classic Italian wine style from a classic and talented producer that is called La Scolca. So today we are going to be looking at one of Italy's best white wine appellations, the Piedmont wines of Gavi DOTG. These are my top three facts about the Gavi wines of Italy. Let's go! So Italy is obviously more renowned for the quality of its red wines. Obviously, you know, the Chianti, the Barolos, the Montepulcianos and many, many more. As for white wines from Italy, well, the country, I guess, is most famous for, you know, quaffable, simple expressions such as the Pinot Grigios or the Proseccos if we talk about sparkling wines too. But Italy also, and this is a bit lesser known, also has some local specialty white wines that are very, very tasty and very, very well crafted at that. And they are definitely worth learning more about and knowing if you want to explore more of the beautiful diversity of the world of wine and Italy in particular. And that's exactly what this channel is all about, exploring the wonderful world of wine. So some of Italy's best white wines are pretty much always produced in relatively small tiny areas but with an ancient winemaking tradition. Being from these relatively small appellations, these wines are not massively exported outside of Italy, but if you go to Italy, every Italian will have those names in mind, and you should certainly know them too. These old, old high quality white wines have all been granted the highest ranking in Italy's appellation system, the DOCG status, while most wines in Italy come under the simply more simple DOC level. Some of Italy's best DOCG white wines include the Ruero, the Suave, Asti, and the one we are going to be looking at today, the Gavi, the DOCG white wines. So Gavi is in fact a small town in the northwestern part of Italy in the Piedmont region. And the Piedmont region is one of the most famous wine growing regions of Italy. That's the region responsible for producing the famous wines from Asti, the Barolos and the Barbaresco. So we're in that sort of northwestern part of the country. But rather than being quite high up inland toward the Alps, this is a very hilly region and that's why it's called Piedmont because it's the Piedmont of the Alps. There are about 11 towns around the town of Gavi that form the Appalachian area of Gavi. As we were saying, it is rather small. They are all located in the southern end of Piedmont, bordering the coastal region of Liguria. So Gavi not only has influences from the Alp mountain ranges in the north, but also cooling influences from the Mediterranean Sea in the south, and that's especially important during summer. Gavi whites are made from a grape called Cortese, which is pretty much unique to this area. Cortese grape can be highly productive grape. It easily produces a lot of grapes in the vines that are not controlled and looked after carefully enough. It's also a very acidic white grape variety that can easily produce loads and loads of bland acidic white wines. And this is exactly why Cortese isn't grown much at all outside of the Gavi area we are looking at today, because it's not so good unless you have you grow it under very specific growing condition, which they really have in Gavi. They have mineral rich, mineral rich soil that infuse a lot of flavors into the grapes. They have a warm enough climate in, in, with a lot of sunshine, but also these cooling influences from the mountains, from the sea, which infuse a large temperature variation between day and nights, guaranteeing concentration into the grape, warm enough to ripen those grapes and concentrate them, but also this temperature variation uh, infuses and keeps a lot of freshness in the acidity and the precision in the floral and fruity character that we're just going to be talking about right now. So the result of this unique terroir are white wines that are dry, 
They're always dry, they're crisp, they're floral, and they are, you know, playful and enjoyable. Yet, there are wines that have richly balanced texture and some solid oily body, some sort of elegance and depth to them, especially to the finish. So, if you want an image and visualize a little bit before you taste a Gavi wine and have a bit of an idea of the style, they are not that dissimilar in style to those of Chablis or Sancerre if we're talking about France. You know, they are dry, mineral, yet relatively deep wines. Although, obviously, the Cortese grape is pretty aromatic as a grape with an expression that is not the one of Chardonnay of Burgundy or Sauvignon Blanc in the Loire. Typical aromas and flavors used to describe Gavi Cortese wines just like this. This one are floral with note of honeysuckle as well as a bit of a peachy pear sort of character with hints of nutty like an almond character to them. On top of this balance and playful expression another advantage of Gavi wine is that you get serious white wines at a relatively low alcohol, at around 12% alcohol. This one is at 12% alcohol. Gavi also makes some reserve wines that are going to be often a little bit more concentrated and expressive in the flavor profile. They also make some sparkling wines, but it, this is more of a niche and small production. Some sparkling wines as Frizzante, lightly fizzy sparkling wines, as well as Spumante wine. And here you go, these are the top facts that you should really know about Gavi. See, it's actually rather fun and simple to explore even the wines from Italy. If you want to explore a little more, I'll link to two excellent examples of Gavi wines, including this one that I've reviewed on this channel as part of the Tasting with Julian series, which is another series where I taste wines and go a little bit deeper into individual wines. These links, I'll link to those two in the description down below as well at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Julian's Wine School. If you did, give it a thumb up to, you know, a little like down below to support my work. And I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Hope you're having a beautiful day, guys. Cheers. Something.